You're a... I see. So some of our theories about the artifacts are correct. So I wanted to begin this by saying I'm not going to get into all the factions and wars. I'm just going to try to stick with things that pertain to the main overall story lore elements of the game. I might make a separate video breaking down the groups and conflicts over the years in Starfield. And with that out of the way, let's just jump right into it. The story of Starfield really begins with an ancient group of beings called the Creators. Not much is said about their origin, but it is implied these beings are the overall god figure of the universe. The Creators are responsible for making the artifacts and temples that you find throughout the game. The purpose for this was intentional. They wanted humans to eventually find these objects and powers to help propel them forward on the next steps of evolution. Side note, this could be interpreted as a reference to 2001 A Space Odyssey, where the giant rectangle monolith is used as a catalyst for human evolution whenever we come into contact with it. But back to the story though, the first recorded human contact with these artifacts comes from a NASA scientist by the name of Victor Isa in the early 2100s. At this point in time, humans have already made small settlements within our own galaxy, and Dr. Isa was the lead scientist on a mission to retrieve an odd gravitational anomaly from Mars. Upon touching the object, though, Isa experiences what he describes as 12 whole days of lost time where he met himself from a distant future. The Isa from the future gave our Dr. Isa knowledge of how to make a gravity engine capable of propelling the human race further into space. But with that, we would eventually lead to the end of our own planet, Earth, as the early testings of this new technology would cause the Earth's magnetosphere to collapse, leaving us exposed to extreme levels of solar heat and radiation. With this newfound knowledge, even knowing fully well about the consequences, Dr. Isa went forward with trying to produce these engines. Counting down, five, four, three, two, one. Are you reading? All clear, Nova. Indicators look good. The ship should be cruising Jupiter's orbit right now. Visual confirmation will be possible in... <laughs> 32 minutes. Afraid the speed of light is on the slow side these days. He did this for what he thought was a good reason, though. He envisioned a future where humans could thrive elsewhere without such a dependence on Earth to stay habitable. In the year 2149, the prophecies from future Isis started to come to fruition. The grav drive tests on Earth started disrupting the magnetosphere at a catastrophic rate. The human race was given an estimated 50 years left before Earth would become uninhabitable. I'd also like to add real quick that Dr. Isa kept the real reasons for Earth demise a secret from the public. As far as everyone knows, it was just Earth's time to go and we just so happened to have the technology to save everyone. This began the mass exodus of the human race from Earth, and in 2156, we eventually settle in the Alpha Centauri system on the planet Jemison, forming the city New Atlantis. A few years later, in 2159, the United Colonies is established, and they take charge of the evacuation for the rest of Earth. Decisive action was required, but the secure transport of an entire civilization would demand a new kind of cooperation a new kind of courage, and a new kind of union. Thus, in 2159, the United Colonies were formed to make that journey possible. Just one year later, the Galileo, the first of many colony ships, touched down here on Jemison, beginning a new era of human history, the age of the United Colonies. In 2275, over a hundred years after humans leaving Earth, Constellation is formed by a man named Sebastian Banks. Constellation is a group of space explorers dedicated to the continuous exploration of the unknown universe, using New Atlantis as the home of their headquarters, the Lodge. In 2310, they discover another artifact. This is the second ever recorded human contact with these artifacts, but it is stored in the archives with not much further investigation. This leads us to the year 2330, where the main campaign of Starfield begins. We're introduced to the main character, Yu, who is a new miner for Argo Extractors. While working at a dig site on planet Vectera, you discover one of these lost artifacts that gives you a glimpse into the universe upon touching it. And 
afterwards, you feel a bit weird, almost like you made some sort of connection with the object. This new artifact piques the interest of Constellation, who's now been long forgotten over the many years living in space. A member of Constellation, Barrett, approaches you on Vectera about coming to Constellation to uncover the truth about these strange artifacts. You're coming with me to Constellation. You're part of this now. When you arrive at Constellation, you give them the artifact that ends up connecting with the other ones they've kept in the archives, like pieces of a puzzle. But this doesn't reveal much other than that there's others out there somewhere in the universe. So with the help of your new friends at Constellation, Sarah, Mateo, Vladimir, Noel, Walter, and Vasco, you set out on a journey across the stars to locate the rest of the artifacts and uncover their mystery. Along the way, you also stumble upon ancient temples of the same origin that imbue you with cosmic powers. At a certain point in the story, once you start to make some real headway with finding the artifact, you're approached in space by a mysterious ship of unknown origin. The specs and data from the ship are unlike anything you or your crew has ever seen, even with such incredible advancements in technology at the time. The pilot of the ship introduces himself only as Starborn, and warns you not to continue the pursuit of these artifacts, and to hand over any that you have. After a brief discussion and narrow escape, you manage to grab jump back to the lodge. The team wasn't really shaken from the encounter, more just confused as they were left with more questions than answers. They opt to cautiously continue on their pursuit for these artifacts. There's a point later on where Constellation's space station, the Eye, is needing repairs and they send half the team up there to fix the problem. In the meantime, you go on a quest to find another artifact, but once you return to the Lodge, you find out that the Eye has been attacked by a Starborn named The Hunter, and now he's on his way to the Lodge for the artifacts. This is a pivotal moment in the story where you must choose to defend the Lodge or head to the Eye and save the team members there. If you decide to stay at the Lodge, you manage to escape with the artifacts, but back on the Eye, Sarah is killed. If you decide to go to the Eye, Sarah is saved, but Barrett is killed back at the lodge. Either way, you're still able to escape with the artifacts. During your escape from the hunter, he mentions something about glimpsing the unity, which resonates with Mateo. He's heard of the phrase in religious teachings before, and thinks it would be helpful to seek knowledge from the Sanctum Universum, a religious group in the world of Starfield. After talking with the priest, he suggests getting the perspective of a few other groups with old stories mentioning unity. After talking with the groups, you learn about a person known only as the Pilgrim, who is a constant across the stories of various cultures. You go on a search to find the burial of the Pilgrim, in hopes it'll answer what the unity is. This all eventually leads you to the planet Indum, where you find the hunter out in space. He doesn't attack you though, he instead asks you to come aboard his ship so you can finally learn what this is all about. On board the ship is Hunter and the Emissary who we learned was the original Starborn we met that warned us to stay away. The two Starborn were discussing what to do about your interference with the Unity, and you just so happened to drop by. They explained to you that the Starborn aren't a collective group, they're all individuals who have seen the Unity for themselves in other universes. They explained that the Unity is a gateway to infinite universes. The artifacts make up the Armillary, which opens this gateway. Once you enter the Unity, you become a Starborn and are transferred to another universe. And in every universe, Starborn fight over the power of the temples and artifacts. With all this newfound knowledge, they leave you with a choice. Side with the Hunter, who believes anyone who's capable to get the artifacts should be allowed to fight for him, or side with the Emissary, who believes this power is too strong for people to freely obtain, or walk on your own path and go against both of them. This isn't the last time they ask you, so you don't have to have the decision set in stone yet. The Emissary asks you to make your way to Earth, where you find the last artifact at an abandoned NASA base. This is where you learn the truth about Victor Isa finding this artifact himself long ago, and using it to power the first grab drive, ultimately leading to the demise of Earth. This is also where you actually make your choice to pick a side, or go into the ending solo. If you pick a side, you'll enter the Unity together, but if you go in solo, then you have to fight your way through the Hunter and Emissary at the final temple. The final battle begins in the space above planet Masada 3, where the final temple is located. After weakening the Hunter and Emissary ships, they both retreat back to the planet where you follow them to the temple. While fighting your way through numerous Starborn Guardians, you're constantly slipping in and out of this universe into others, 
even coming across a universe where you yourself was the constellation member killed on the eye. You finally reach the temple underground, where the hunter and emissary are waiting for you. There's one final attempt you can make at persuading them to just abandon the fight and let you enter the unity in peace. Or you can just go in guns blazing. If you do choose to fight, it's actually a pretty cool sequence where you're teleporting to various locations you visited throughout the game mid-fight. After the persuasion or fight is over, you obtain any artifacts they were holding onto and complete the armillary. Once the armillary is completed, you can connect it with your ship and the next hyperjump sends you straight into the Unity. Upon reaching the Unity, you're standing in what looks like the culmination of multiple universes all interconnected. In the middle of it all is a giant orb described as Eternity and you. You are seeing this figure as yourself because we as humans can experience reality outside of ourselves, so this is a form we comprehend. This person isn't actually you, and they're not one of the creators. They act almost as a navigator through this in-between space. They explain to you that in order to become Starborn, you must give yourself over to the universe. A part of yourself will be left behind in your old universe, and the other part will go on to a new one. This essentially means you leave behind the essence of your life and everything you've done to influence the people of this universe. As an example of this, the being shows you how the various factions and people will now do things using the influence you have left behind. The Constellation membership who stays behind will in time publish their data about the discovery of the artifacts, the Starborn, and the Unity. Space exploration across the settled systems is given new life as people search for hope out there in the stars. Ron Hope's downfall proves once again that the Free Star Rangers put justice above petty power plays and politics. A sense of commitment to the common good grows throughout the Free Star Collective. Acts of heroism and noble sacrifice increase. But there is also another choice. You can opt to walk away from the Unity and return to your normal life in your normal universe. Upon entering the Unity though, you're given one of the greatest audio and visual scenes I've ever seen in gaming, before you wake up as a Starborn on your own ship in a completely new universe. This is basically Bethesda's rendition of a new game plus, and it's also why they said the real game doesn't really start until you complete the main story. The real game starts when you become Starborn, and you can either go through the whole campaign normally again as Starborn, or play a special fast-tracked version of the story where you just spill the beans on everything to Constellation as soon as you meet them. Each time you complete the main story as a Starborn, you can keep doing it again, and again, and again. Just traveling to a new universe each time, starting over. And by the second, maybe third, maybe fourth time, you realize that your story is exactly like every other Starborn you've interacted with or killed in the game. You're just one of them now, in the endless race for more and more power. So that's going to pretty much wrap up all the main story lore for Starfield. If I happen to leave anything out, feel free to comment it down below and let me know. And if you've liked what you've seen here, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. This has been Lunar, and I will catch you guys later.